Hi everyone, thank you so much for making out the time to join us at this year's Jamstar conference. In case you are wondering, these are some of my favorite people from last year's event and I really miss hanging out with everyone because of the current condition, but I promise you super soon everything is going to be over and we are going to get back to being at events together and partying together. My name is Christian Wamba and I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft, focusing on Azure, JavaScript, and startups. We are going to take a deep dive into what using the internet feels like in emerging markets. You will go beyond learning just the statistics and feel the impact of internet from the eyes of someone that grew up in an emerging market. At the end, you will see how Jamstack is a revolutionary idea that can drastically improve experience in these markets. Emerging markets is a term popular among economists and investors, but not necessarily technical people like you and I. So let's start with taking a look at where in the world I identify as emerging markets. Emerging markets are countries aspiring to be categorized as developed countries, but yet to meet the standards. All the highlighted areas on this map can be identified as emerging markets. In Africa, there is just Nigeria, Egypt, and South Africa. We cannot review all the emerging markets, but we can take a look at one of the worst performing ones, especially Nigeria, which happens to be where I am from. I have a rather vague saying that goes like, if it works in Africa, it works everywhere else. This might not be practically true, but when we talk about performance influenced by internet speed and hardware, it makes absolute sense. In other words, the worst case when measuring performance for your product is going to be Africa. All this might not make absolute sense right now, so let's take a look at some data. I think the first thing we should take a look at is what it would cost for an average Nigerian to buy internet. An average user in Nigeria spends 15 gigabytes per month, which is way more economical when compared to 75 gigabytes per a user in the United States. Judging from the most popular network provider in Nigeria, this would cost me 6,000 Naira per month, which is over $15. Well, you could say, meh, that, that's not so bad. But hold that thought for one second. 75% of graduates in Nigeria earn less than $120. A lot of graduates have to, and mind you, emphasis on have to, take care of their parents and siblings after school. While they are trying to make ends meet and keep their heads above water, internet takes one over eight of their salary. So after sending love home and taking care of their basic needs, you end up living paycheck to paycheck. Internet becomes the last thing you want to worry about affording because mom might call in sick any day. And don't even get me started on health insurance. I guess I'm just trying to remind us that internet is a huge privilege. And I can say this with confidence because I haven't video called my mom in weeks. It has just been audio. And the reason is, buying internet is not on her top 10 list of things to spend money on. Regardless, one day at a time, we still try to afford internet and join the rest of the world to banter on Twitter. Speaking of joining the rest of the world, let's take a look at the rate of internet adoption in Sub-Saharan Africa. At 2012, only 10% of the population was frequently online. It grew drastically to 50% in 2018. But there is also a prediction that more and even bigger numbers will come online between 2020 and 2025. Africa is finally at the time where grandma is part of the very uncomfortable family WhatsApp group. And trust me, 
The phone my parents and grandparents used to make this WhatsApp group so uncomfortable is nothing to write home about. Speaking of phones, let's actually take a look at what these phones actually look like. According to NinjaPrice.com and my favorite phone dealer in Lagos Computer Village, these are the top three phones in the past few years. The first one is the Techno Canon. The second one is the Johnny P5. And then the third one is the Infinix Hot 5. I won't deny, of course, iPhone still shines here. A lot, actually. But of course, I wouldn't be giving this talk if iPhones were our reality. On the other hand, and according to Creative Blog, these are the phones we use as developers. The number one phone is Samsung Galaxy. And then we have the iPhone 11. And then we also have the iPhone 8. And the funny thing is, even when we test on different devices, we test with our partner's phone who probably uses a Google Pixel. It is heartbreaking to try and compare phones from these two categories. I'm comparing with an older iPhone and yet, it has a processing speed that is two times that of the journey. It has a RAM that is also two times that of the journey. And it has a battery power that lasts for 14 hours compared to journey's 9 hours. Trust me, a shorter lasting battery is no good news for a country with very poor electricity. And as a creative, my phone is two times more optimized than majority of my users' phones. Now it makes sense because the underpaid 75% we saw earlier can only afford this low life, low battery life, low memory, low CPU phone that costs $80. There is a huge chance they're probably just watching right now and wondering, hey, I don't live in Africa, how is this my problem? Well, the top list of sites in Nigeria include Google, YouTube, BetNinja.com, Facebook, Yahoo, Nairaland, Legit.ng, DailyPost.ng, Wikipedia.org, Zoom, Punch.ng or PunchNG.com rather, Jumia, Office.com, Amazon.com, Instagram, Twitter, NigerLoaded.com, Vanguard, GT Bank, and of course Netflix. But take a very close look at this list. There is a reason why I had to dictate them as. Take a, a really close look at them and see if you can find anything that stands out. Apparently, Google, YouTube, Facebook, Yahoo, Wikipedia, Zoom, Office, Amazon, Instagram, Twitter, Netflix. These are all global companies, which means 50, 55% of these companies are not African companies. So the point I'm trying to make is that the top 20 list companies or the top 20 list sites that are visited by Nigerians, the majority of these sites are, are global. From Facebook, from Google to Facebook, Wikipedia to Zoom, Microsoft to Office, to Amazon, and of course, Instagram, Twitter, and Netflix. Even if you don't think, or even if you don't work in these companies, this next one should blow your mind. Even though it's not the top 20, or rather it didn't make the top 20 list, Stack Overflow is number 25 of top visited sites in a country that is the largest population in Africa with over 195 million people. This is enough to tell you that every line of code you write could trigger a butterfly effect. Back to the top 20 though. Most of these sites are either news websites, which target a lot more senior citizens that have better attention span and good, and good discipline to wait for a site to load. Legit.ng and Punch.ng are just examples of those news websites. And I'm sure my dad is okay with loading Punch news websites while he makes his morning tea. 
either you are a news website or an, an entertainment website and as long as you have a clickbait headline or I can make money from you, then as a Nigerian, I might be willing to wait for you to take two minutes to load. Now, if you're paying me money like Bet Niger, I'm willing to wait. But if you're going to remind me of how broke I am, just like every bank does, it's an entirely different story. I expect you to load as instant as an SMS because after all, you're just going to tell me how terrible my life is and how terrible my life sucks. Now, let's take a look at what it feels like to load one of these banks on the journey phone we took with, we saw earlier or we compared to the iPhone 8. GT Bank is by far one of the best banks in Nigeria, so let's test with the best case scenario. The performance is not even close to good enough. Lighthouse score is 18, and if you drill down, you can see that the speed index is takes about 9.8 seconds. It takes 24 seconds before I can interact with the site. It takes 24 seconds before the CPU becomes idle again for Johnny CPU. The landing page alone, even before I can log in, is showing me too much information as a returning customer that is trying to get straight to sending money to my mom. At this point, I don't want to be reminded that we are proud Africans. Or who to call when my card is missing. Or one million menus that shows how to open an international account when I am too broke to even sustain a local one. Or the current share price of GT Bank. Also, if I wanted to listen to music, I would not come to the bank site. I would go to one of those websites that we saw in the previous slide. And the most popular way so far is to send via SMS or USSD. Well, thanks to companies like Africa is Talking and Flutterwave, who has been pioneering the technologies to help make doing this kind of uh, transactions super easy. To be honest, this has been a great strategy. But think about it. Take a look at this, this slide that we saw uh, previously. If data prediction says that 80% of us will be online between 2020 to 2025, I think that we deserve a better and modern U uh, banking, uh, rather UI for banking, more than something better than just SMS or USSD. Because like, if you have 80% of people interacting with user interfaces, why not actually go to where they are and give them a technology that makes their life easier than just SMS. I mean, SMS is work. I'm not disputing that fact. But this is basically because we had no option than to stick with doing only SMS or USSD banking. But at the point where people can now afford to come online, in as much as it's expensive, but they can still afford to come online, they still want to be able to enjoy the same experience that people in other countries uh, get when they use smartphones. And this was why I had to go make my own quick banking solution to prove to banks that they can actually do better. And I actually called this demo quick bank. Now you can access this demo by going to aka.ms slash quickbank. But basically what happens is a customer signs in, of course, with GitHub because for convenience. Definitely you won't, you won't use GitHub for authentication, but I'm just using this for convenience. Then their transaction and their balance gets loaded and they can see their previous transactions. Now what they can do is to simply go send money to uh, an existing beneficiaries by clicking the send money uh, button or the send money option. Now you can see a preloaded beneficiaries based on the beneficiary they added on the actual bank banking app. Now they can set whatever amount they want to send and just click the send button and they would simply send money to whoever they want to send money to. And I promise you, this is not just an like a mock API. This is actual Flutterwave API 
which I'm just using the sandbox key. But if I switch this key with um, with an actual production key, you can be able to send money from one customer to another using Flutter with APIs. Now, if we take a look at how this actually performs compared to GT Bank, you will get over 100% boost in, per in performance. And even though the speed index is not still where we want it to be, this is because we are using Flutter Web Sandbox API. And if I was in the production API, things would be definitely uh, faster and content would load quicker for the customers. Now, everything you've seen in this demo is powered by Jamstack. And that's why the, the example of this demo can afford to be as fast as it is. Now, right at the bottom of this entire stack, I'm basically calling the Flutter Wave API, the API to get the balance of a customer, the endpoints to get the transactions, as well as the endpoints to make payments, like post endpoints to, to send payments or send airtime or pay DSTV bills uh, for a customer. Now, of course, I cannot talk to these APIs directly from my React or Gatsby or Next or Noxt or Vue app. So what I have to do is to use serverless functions as proxies between my app and the Flutterwave API. Now, what my client's app can do is to make a request to my serverless function, and then my serverless function uses the Flutterwave keys to handle these transactions. So every single API call has a proxy. So we have like the get balance for Flutterwave balance, the fetch transactions for the Flutterwave transactions, and the process payment endpoint for the uh, Flutter Wave payment endpoint. But then at this point, I'm st the, we are still not talking to the client app directly. There is also an authentication proxy because at, our API is basically just open to anyone if they have access to the URL. So what I had to do was to build a proxy that checks if the user that's trying to access this API, whether that person is accessing from the browser or is just typing the API, the function URL, uh, directly into the into Postman or whatever. Um, I'm basically using this this uh, layer to check if the user is authenticated before allowing them to have access to the serverless functions. Now, right after that proxy is the static site. We just interact with the proxy and channels the request to any of the endpoints. And then, of course, we have our OAuth authentication, which we are handling with uh, GitHub authentication. So. This is basically what powers QuickBank. It's as simple as this. There's no, there's no magic. And trust me, just like I said earlier, this entire app works like it, like it's a production app. So all I just need to do to be able to send actual money to my mom or to any of my beneficiaries is to go to my Flutterwave dashboard and take an actual API key, like the production API key, switch it with the sandbox key we are testing with right now, and I'll be able to send actual money to my mom's bank account or send her or pay for her phone bills or pay for her DSTV. Thank you for making all the time to listen to me today. But remember, every single optimization you make, no matter how little it is, goes a long way to make the experience of someone in an emerging market that's interested in your product better. Don't ever take it for granted or don't, don't think that those, those changes don't make impact in people's life. It really goes a long way. And locally, we're trying our best to speak to people who can actually optimize their products using, uh, using, Jamstack, uh, using Jamstack technologies and solutions to help make this experience better for everyone. And basically just like you've seen how much money you can save people from this kind of uh, regions by just optimizing your site. Remember, if it takes every single second it takes for your site to load, costs someone a huge amount of money that they could use to make their life better. Thank you.